few agents to come in and pitch for their business. What are the key questions that um, vendors should really be asking those agents, and I guess to differentiate between them? I think, I think they've got to drill down and really unpack what the agent is saying because, Chris, an agent goes into a listing presentation to convince the owner to get the listing. Normally they'll interview three agents. Now I'm going to be very clear about it. Some agents are very good, but there's a lot of agents that are very bad because real estate's got a low barrier of entry. If you've got a pulse rate and you're vertical, you can get in. So I don't want any of the owners watching this show to get stuck with a bad agent. So I'm going to run through a couple of questions that sure, I think are very good. I think um, they, a, a vendor should ask an agent to answer the following questions. What is your list to sell ratio? Which means what percentage of the properties that you list actually get sold? The second question is, how much money are you investing in personal education and training and development? You know the importance of constantly being an evolved uh, uh, commercial person and in real estate, having up-to-date skills critical. Next one is, can I have a list of the last 10 sellers that you have sold for? Can I have their names, phone numbers, emails to communicate? Because your past clients are going to be a good indicator of what your job's going to be like as a current agent. What are your average days on market? Um, can you show me the progress report that you'll be giving me when I list with you? What will you send me each week to keep me informed on what's happening with my property? Um, will you be doing the open for inspections and talking to the buyers yourself or are you going to outsource it to someone else? Because that does happen in real estate sometimes. The person that lists it doesn't actually manage the property. And the last one is, and I'll make reference to our, our core logic RP data, what is the average selling price you've got versus the average selling price in the marketplace as per CoreLogic RP data, because it shows how good the agent is as a negotiator, as a marketer. So I think there are great seven questions for an owner to ask an agent. Tom, they're unbelievable questions. I hate to see when you get to sell your house, <laughs> then the agents that you're going to get, you're going to be drilling them like anything. Yeah, well... I mean, you probably already know who to use already. Yeah, so I know who the good ones and the bad ones are, but I think the most important thing is any if, if an agent can't answer these questions, you should be concerned because you don't want to fall for an agent that's got a great sales bill with nice glossy brochures. You want actually evidence-based information because this is a big decision. If you actually think about it, even if the agent got you 5% more than another agent, on a million dollars, we're talking $50,000. And that. a good agent should have those up his sleeves straight away. So if it takes him a week to come back with those answers, you know there's a problem as well. I, 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 this is their core business. If they can't answer these basic fundamental questions, it says to you that there's probably 50 or 60 agents in one particular marketplace that you can be interviewing. There's no shortage of real estate agents. But I think that anyone that's watching this show should be very clear that the cheapest agent, because I don't, I don't, like, I don't like vendors picking the cheapest agent, because the cheapest agent is in fact the agent that gets you the best price. Exactly. Yeah. So some great questions there. Certainly use those if you're looking at hiring an agent over the next few months.